Dina hina yata chi lo hari namu thari lo thara sakshi jagai madhai. Nityananda Prabhu proved to the entire world for all time to come in the most explicit way the power of the holy name and the power of Lord Chaitanya's mercy when he delivered Jagai and Madhai in one day. And then there were those thieves, band of dacoits, robbing, murdering, killing. Nityananda Prabhu put them in such difficult situations just so they would open their hearts to receive his mercy. And when they vow to never do their bad things again and take the name of Krishna and serve the Vaishnavas, he gave them Krishna Prema. Understand, these people, according to their karma, they were destined toward endless sufferings. We do not believe that hell is eternal, but it could be a long time, which to our calculation is as good as eternal. And Jagai and Madhai and this band of dacoit robbers and killers, they were destined to quadruple eternal sufferings in hell. They didn't even have to do anything else. All they had to do was go to sleep for the rest of their lives, what they had already done. But Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they took that entire gigantic stock of sins and just made it evaporate instantly and gave them Krishna Prema. Nityananda Prabhu would go to the houses of people, strangers, fold his hands, straw between his teeth, and cry and beg people, take the name of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya has come to save you, just take the name of Krishna. And amazingly, Lord Nityananda Prabhu never, ever, ever took credit for anything. He gave all the credit to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He took all the trouble, and gave all the credit to Lord Chaitanya. We read about Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. When Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda came to Ram Kali, Rupa and Sanatan, they initially approached Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur. And by the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu, he accepted them and brought them and offered them to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And their nephew, Jiva Goswami, he remained home while his uncles were living in Vrindavan. And eventually, Nityananda Prabhu met him in Navadweep and gave him a complete tour, or parikrama, of Sri Navadweep Dham. Some parts of that are written in the Navadweep Dham Mahatmya. And after revealing the holy land of Navadweep to Jiva Goswami, it was Nityananda Prabhu's mercy and blessings that sent Jiva Goswami to Varanasi to be a great scholar and then to Brindaban to be the successor of Rupa and Sanatan. Now our Vaishnav literatures, the very basis of them is based on Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami and Jiva Goswami. They all attain Brindaban and Mahaprabhu's mercy through Nityananda Prabhu. Raghunath Das Goswami was a billionaire. He was the heir to a tremendous fortune. He had all good qualities. But after associating with Haridas Thakur, he wanted to renounce everything and just serve Lord Chaitanya. But he couldn't. His uncle and his father were extremely influential and very powerful, and he was the only heir. So they kept him at home by force. They married him to a most beautiful, lovely, chaste wife just to keep him home. They gave him all sorts of gifts and luxuries. But all he wanted was to be with Lord Chaitanya and the devotees. And every time he tried to escape home, by force his parents would bring him back. They had 11 guards constantly watching over this one boy 24 hours a day. It was impossible. But Raghunath Das Goswami understood that he wasn't doing it right. One cannot approach the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without coming through the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. And Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna. Narottam Das Thakur explains that through the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu, one has the most direct and clear access 
to the eternal loving service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. How is that? Because Lord Nityananda Prabhu is the means by which we achieve the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Raghunath Das Goswami went to Panihati and he was so humble. He would not approach Nityananda Prabhu directly. Nityananda Prabhu was such an exalted person to him that from a distance he bowed down. But a devotee told Lord Nityananda, there is Raghunath at a distance, bowing. He said, oh, you are bowing from distance like thief. You come. Nityananda Prabhu went to him, picked him up and gave him a service. Feed all the Vaishnavas and all the people in general with chida dahi, chipped rice and yogurt. That will be my happiness. Raghunath Das Goswami dovetailed his propensities. He was expert at buying and selling things. He was expert at organizing and managing. This was the perfection of all his skills. He arranged with such deep concern to please the hearts of Nityananda Prabhu and all the devotees. And soon it was such a festival. All the devotees were sitting there with pots of chitta and dahi, eating. And so many other people found out about it and they all gathered under this banyan tree and along the banks of the Ganga and Panihati and Raghunath Das Goswami, it's not that he said, well, I already bought so much and no mud, nobody else is allowed. Everyone was welcome, whoever you are. And he just kept sending people to farther and farther villages because they were getting whole supplies, entire town supplies of chira dahi was being bought. He would send them to another town and bring it everything. And he just kept preparing and preparing, preparing. His service attitude was so sweet how he served the devotees, how he served the people in general. It was so genuine. Nityananda was pleased. And please hear what Lord Nityananda does when he is pleased. He brought Lord Chaitanya there by his prayer. He prayed to Lord Goranga, please come and participate in this festival. You'll have so much fun. And Lord Chaitanya immediately came in a spiritual form. Only Nityananda Prabhu and a few intimate associates could see him. But they were eating Chiridahi together. In fact, Lord Nityananda was taking pieces from everyone's plate and putting it in Lord Chaitanya's mouth. And Lord Chaitanya was taking it from devotees' plates and putting it in Lord Nityananda's mouth. And nobody knew. It was such a happy time. Jagai Madhai too. See the strategy of Lord Nityananda. Here he was preaching to these totally violent people to chant Krishna's names. And they were so angry, he allowed them to hit him on the head. He willingly and happily had a broken open head and blood pouring out because he knew that Lord Chaitanya was going to come if this happened. He attracted Lord Chaitanya to come and save them. And he did come with eyes red like wrath and a Sudarsan chakra in his hand ready to kill them. But Nityananda Prabhu knew he was going to save them because Nityananda Prabhu pleaded on their behalf. So see how Nityananda Prabhu, whether as Raghunath Das Goswami or Jagai or Madhai, when he's pleased, he brings Lord Chaitanya to bless you, to deliver you, and takes no credit. He's the original guru, Balaram. Raghunath Das Goswami revealed to the world the next day that no one can approach Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy without the loving kindness of Nityananda Prabhu. It's the only way. Nityananda Prabhu placed his feet on Raghunath Das Goswami's head and blessed him. He said, he told all Vaishnavas, bless Raghunath Das Goswami. All the Vaishnavas blessed him. So because you were blessed by the devotees, because you served them such nice prasad, and Lord Chaitanya personally came and participated, very soon you will be delivered from all of your material entanglements. You will be an intimate, loving associate of Lord Chaitanya. In fact, you will be the assistant of his personal secretary, Swarup Damodar Goswami. All the impediments impossible impediments of Raghunath Das Goswami were forever removed because he received 
the compassion of Nityananda Prabhu. So many instances are there of his kindness. We have Kal Krishna Das. He was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's personal servant through the South Indian tour. He was a brahmachari. And due to the power of Maya, even though he's traveling with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we read about the South Indian Yatra, that's just a few little drops from the ocean of the pastimes he performed in South India. Kal Krishnadas was right there, on the scene, watching, helping. And even he fell victim due to bad association. And he actually, in the middle of the night, left Lord Chaitanya to join these Dakoit tribal people who were engaged in all sorts of tantric, immoral activities. He was just innocent. Because he was such an innocent, simple-hearted person, somehow or other, because of the wrong association, his mind was corrupted. But the Lord was so kind, he went and grabbed him by the hair and took him back. And when those Batahari people came to try to take him back, Lord Chaitanya said, Listen, you are all swamis. You have your servants. I'm a swami. I have my servants. So let me have my servant back. And when they attacked him, Lord Chaitanya didn't do anything. Material energy was so, was so disgusted with these people for doing that that they moved their weapons out of their hands and their own weapons started cutting off their limbs. But they learned a good lesson. But when they came back from South India, Lord Chaitanya rejected him. I never want to see this man's face again. And Kal Krishna was crying. He was weeping, rejected forever. And the Lord would not, he would not see him. Here's a man who made a deep offense to the Lord, but he was repentant. But the Lord, for the sake of showing the world example, relentlessly rejected him. But it was Nityananda Prabhu who took mercy on him. He understood. He learned a lesson. He learned his lesson. <laughs> but Nityananda Prabhu was not going to go back to Lord Chaitanya because he knew the Lord was showing the world a good instruction. But it was Nityananda Prabhu who consoled him, showed love and kindness to him, personally sent him to Navadweep to give Mahaprasad to Sachi Mata and Adwaita Prabhu and Srivas Prabhu and tell, for the rest of his life, he gave him the service. Just tell all the Vaishnavas the wonderful South Indian tour that you I witnessed. So he not only consoled him, kept him alive, but he engaged him in Lord Chaitanya's service. A person who was fallen and rejected. King Prataparudra, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was not going to meet him, but it was Nityananda Prabhu, the main person who was figuring out all the different ways to keep King Prataparudra alive. Because he was either going to give up his kingdom, become a beggar, or take his life. But Nityananda Prabhu was arranging so many things. Bring his son, give him some of Lord Chaitanya's remnants. He was pleading for the king. And ultimately, along with Sarvabhoma and others, he arranged the king to have all his desires fulfilled in the garden during Ratha Yatra. The last initiated disciple of Lord Nityananda was Brindaban Das Thakur. It was Nityananda Prabhu who ordered him to write Sri Chaitanya Mangal, which later became Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, the original biography of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Throughout the Chaitanya Bhagavat, Vrindavan Das Thakur is informing the world that whatever stories I'm telling you, I heard these stories from Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu told the stories and had Vrindavan Das Thakur write them down for the world. This book has supreme authority. Not only did Nityananda Prabhu tell him the stories, but he empowered, he gave Brindaban Das Thakur the vision to actually see these pastimes and then share that with all of us. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was living in a village in Bengal when there was a crisis of, an, of a dispute between himself and his brother 
and offenses have been made to Miniketan or Ramdas. And Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami was trying to defend Nityananda Prabhu. Because his brother had great faith in Lord Chaitanya, but not in Nityananda. But Kaviraj Goswami, he said, if you don't have faith in Nityananda, then your faith in Lord Chaitanya is like the philosophy of half of a hen. Half of a hen, a foolish farmer thinks, the back half is giving eggs that I can sell, so I make money, but the front half I have to feed it, I lose money. So if I cut it in half, then I throw away the front half and the back half, then I'll only make money. But if you cut it in half, the hen is dead. So to think that you can have the mercy of Lord Chaitanya without the mercy of Lord Nityananda, to have faith in one without the other, you cannot reach Lord Chaitanya without the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So that night when he went to sleep, Sri Nityananda Prabhu appeared to him, dressed as a cowherd boy in Vrindavan with a cowherd stick and a beautiful turban. He was so beautiful. He pointed his finger in the western direction and said to Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, Go to Vrindavan and all your desires will be fulfilled. As far as we know, there was no thoughts in Kaviraj Goswami's mind to go to Vrindavan. Nityananda Prabhu just, in a dream, go, now. And Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, as soon as he woke up, he didn't even take anything with him. As soon as he woke up, he just left his house and started going to Vrindavan. There was no second thought. He didn't even say goodbye to anyone. That was the power of Lord Nityananda Prabhu's influence. And in Vrindavan, he lived in Radha Kund. And it was Raghunath Das Goswami who received. It was by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu that Raghunath Das Goswami was able to learn all these pastimes by watching them and hearing them from Swarup Damodar. And he heard from Raghunath Das Goswami. And by the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu, Krishna Das Kaviraj was there to hear and to write Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. In this way, Nityananda Prabhu has given the highest mercy to all, all living beings for all time to come by arranging for these scriptures to be revealed to us. Yes, whether one is a king, a billionaire, a scholar, a housewife, or a murderer and criminal, or a devotee who betrays the Lord and falls down, and everything in between. Nityananda Prabhu is there to give you shelter, to give you mercy, and to give you life's perfection. All that's required is you open your heart to receive it and follow his ways. listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.